I wonder if I can talk to you alone for a moment, Mrs. Soprano? On the basis of the Sanford Binet, he's high IQ. You can't prove it by me. He's got a D-plus average. Well, he doesn't apply himself, but he is smart. The results tell us. He's a leader. Alan, how are you doing today? Hey, good to see you. Uh, where are you, by the way? Right now, I'm in Dublin. Uh, I know the shower curtain doesn't give much away, <laughs> but... Because uh... <laughs> uh, you, you, you spent a lot of time over here. I have. That's why I asked. Uh, I've been in Dublin a couple of times. It's so beautiful. I spent most of my time in Belfast, obviously, for um, the, that the, other show. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that that other huge show that everyone <laughs> uh, is still talking about to this day. But we will focus on The Sopranos just for the moment. Um, can I ask, in not including this movie, obviously, because that would be cheating a little bit, but what is your favorite mafia or mobster movie of all time? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, Scorsese, I guess, is a broad label, <clears throat> is, 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 the, is the obvious answer. Um, there is a gangstery movie that is probably one of my favorite movies ever that's sort of outside that box uh, that I'd like to mention because I think everybody should watch it a hundred times like I have. Um, and it's uh, Vim Vendor's The American Friend, um, which is not literally a gangster movie, except there's a bunch of gangsters in it. Um, it's a crime movie, but uh, uh, unlike anything else, and it's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. And it's uh, uh, and it's similar to Sopranos in a way in that it's using a gangster um, milieu and a crime story to get into some really uh, dark, interesting, funny human stuff. Well, that's that's a shot right to the top of my watch list. So <laughs> thank you very much for that recommendation. Uh, you were obviously very close to the show, like as it was coming out, like I guess live to the rest of the world. But I'm curious, has your opinion on how the show ended? Because people are still writing think pieces and reaction pieces to that. And there's so many people who are just now catching up on it because they want to see it ahead of this movie. So has your opinion on, on how the show ended changed from then to how I guess you might feel about it now? Uh, not at all. The funny thing is that I, I have very strong feelings about how the show ended and, and what it means. And uh, David disagrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> His show and he wrote it, so uh, I'm going out on a limb. But um, <clears throat> I, I think for, for David, it's very important to not answer that question, you know, and to sort of uh, to let it hover. Um, to me, I will say firmly, I, I think uh, Tony got shot in the back of the head in that scene. Um, and it's uh, for various reasons. Um, and I it sort of influenced the way I directed this movie, uh, that interpretation. There's one of my favorite scenes in the movie is, is young Tony um, talking to Dickie and he's had a glimpse of, of the gangster life. He's seen his father get arrested. He's seen a guy get shot in the back. Um, and he says, I don't want that to happen to me. And it's one of the most beautiful heartbreaking moments, this young kid, it's um, William Ludwig who played this sort of 10 year old uh, Tony um, and that, plays you know powerfully in the movie but if you carry the show in your head too uh it, it, it's even more powerful and um uh and if you carry my particular interpretation of the final scene <laughs> it's even more powerful but like i said uh david would disagree with me and tell me i was wrong so um yeah like it leaving it all open to interpretation is obviously one of the reasons why we are still debating even right now to this day and i really appreciate the because there is a sense of that air in the show as well where you're, you're not even though it's a prequel there's still you're always like tony don't like this this is whole other part for you and i appreciated that that element of this as well well yeah that's the big question i mean to me the, the, the movie is about one thing it's uh you know is your destiny locked in or can you change it can you change who you are and we think we know tony's destiny because we've seen the show so he seems locked um but um he didn't have to turn out that way and we see it we see the process that 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 sort of shaped him and every other character in the movie is going through the same thing. Um, you know, can I, am I, is my, is my destiny already written for me or can I reinvent myself? Uh, which is sort of the classic American, you know, mythology that you can, any, you can be anything you want. You can reinvent yourself. And because we're in Sopranos land, that doesn't play out as positively as, um, as people hope. There's, there's one character in the movie who actually transforms himself. Yeah. I, I, it's again, like, I think it's just such a, it's, a, it's such a vast undertaking because people love that show 
Um, and I, I appreciate everything that that has been brought to this film because it's it's got such a weight on it. But you, your like your television directing CV, it's it's so massively impressive. And now we're seeing it like translated onto the big screen. Obviously, we've we've this isn't your first movie, but having worked on this movie and The Sopranos, and we've seen a Sex in the City movie, and we've seen a Deadwood movie, I think as well. Uh, are there any other shows of yours that you would love to see? do that jump to the big screen as well. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I almost did the Deadwood movie and it was uh, heartbreaking to not uh, do it. I had to, I had to drop out of the Deadwood movie to do the Sopranos movie. That was not, <laughs> that was not a, a Sophie's choice right there. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's really interesting. I mean, uh, you know, certainly there could be a Game of Thrones movie, but in a way that it was already a Game of Thrones movie because the, the show is so big. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure that uh, the jump to the big screen would be that, that different. Uh, uh, I have to think of something um, you know, something more off kilter, like a bored to death movie. Um, <laughs> I did the pilot for bored to death and, uh, that was a, a very unique, um, tone and, and I just loved everything about it. Uh, so it'd be hilarious to see that done as a movie. Oh, like now's the time, like <laughs> the, the, the genre is making a massive comeback. So you've got at least one front row fan right here for your bored to death movie. <laughs> I'll tell Jonathan and Jason and, uh, and uh, we'll get everybody back together. Fantastic. Alan, thank you so much for your time today. As far as your nephew goes. I'm listening. Stay out of his life. <laughs>